Okay, I'm back. For our second video, remember uh, we're working here on the Soundstream EGA 1700D amplifier. Uh, and in the first video, we found out that this amplifier was staying in protect mode because it had some shorted output transistors. And what we did is we removed those uh, transistors. And if we replace them, the amplifier would work fine. But after we removed those five, we tested the amplifier and we found out that, sure enough, the amp is working fine now. It doesn't go under protect anymore. So that lets me know that that's what the problem was with the amplifier. Since I have the schematic of this amplifier, I, could, I was also able to check to see that uh, these transistors are in parallel with one another, which means that uh, if you replace one of them, you need to replace all of them that are in parallel to each other. And uh, this uh, particular amplifier had five and five. Five were in parallel. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, had uh, five parallel pairs of transistors. And what I'm going to do is uh, replace them all because I don't want when I replace it with brand new ones, these five that are remaining to bear more of a brunt of the load because they're older or they may have different properties of the new ones that I put in. So I'm going to replace all of the uh, transistors in the amplifier. <clears throat> so in order to do that, I need to remove these uh, transistors, these five remaining transistors that are in here. So what's necessary to do that is uh, most amps that you look at the transistors are somehow or another going to be locked down to the uh, heat sink some kind of way. This amplifier actually uses these little um, heat sinks right here to hold the amplifier down to the heat sink. So you remove those screws and then that will expose the transistors or the MOSFETs and then what you're going to do is actually uh, desolder them from the board. Uh, and once you've uh, taken the uh, clasps off that holds them down, you'll be able to uh, lift it up and away from the heat sink if you need to to get better access to actually remove it from the uh, circuit board. <clears throat> and then it's just a matter of removing them from the circuit board. I'll uh, do one here and then um, cut the video off and then we'll come back after I've got them all removed and I'll show you how to go about putting in the new ones. But what I do is... Uh, usually just lift it up and away from the board like that see it there now it's up and away from the board and I go ahead and cut the uh, transistor away from the leg so I can pull the legs out individually because there are three of them and it, it would be nearly impossible to remove them without them being separated so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the transistor away from its legs simple as that now all I have is the three transistor legs in the uh, circuit board. And I'm going to remove those now. So, get out my solder iron and go ahead and prep it for this removal and get some of this oxidation off of it because I've had it on since we've uh, been videoing because I knew I was going to need it and it is hot let me see I'm going to tin it a little bit get my needle nose pliers so I can grab the legs as I pull them out
All right, that one's out. All right, that one's out. All right, and you just do that for all of them. I think there's a little piece of this one left. 